So my name is Jasmine Lavu, and I work for the American River College Design Hub. I will be presenting the Foster Youth Support Project on individual housing. So in this presentation, we will provide you with information to better understand that foster youth are a special population that needs specific assistance with shelter after they age out of the system, that national, state, and local planning agencies have laws and planning systems in place to help provide this assistance. Individual property owners who want to help provide this assistance can do so in a cost-appropriate manner, and there is additional support for foster youth that is available within specific communities to provide even more support for foster youth. And seeing that this type of special support project is needed, is supported by planning authorities, and ties in with additional support agencies, we hope to provide cause for individuals to join in the effort to support foster youth by providing tiny home shelters. So foster youth are identified by the federal government as a special population by the Fair Housing Act, which means that they have special needs and rights for housing. And although they are recognized as a group in need, you can see from these charts that not enough is being done. So the pie charts show that most foster youth leave the system by aging out rather than being placed in a home. And down here, you can see that most foster youth are older in the system. In this presentation, I will be covering these areas of interest, mainly focusing on economics and the foster youth support programs and services. Our focus for this presentation is based on a specific site in California. However, it is representative of all areas across the state. Our particular site is located in Humboldt, California, which is an area southeast of San Diego. So as you can see on this map in the background, San Diego is located right here and Humboldt is right over here. On this slide, you can see some data regarding housing needs for foster youth in the area where our tiny homes will be located. So here we have housing needs in California. So in 2020, about 12,000 homeless were unaccompanied young adults. And within San Diego, the San Diego area, there were approximately 1,500 homeless youth in San Diego County, and that was in November of 2021. And then here are some of the numbers that go along with the housing needs in California. And this is the San Diego area outlined by the blue line here. And this is where our tiny homes are or will be. And the darker the area on this map, the more foster children are in that area. Here you can see that in the current system, housing that is available is unstable. On this chart, you can see that the longest length of stay is 12 months, and the majority of the foster youth that are put in this program or join this program, which is 58% here, stay less than 12 months. This could be due to requirements and regulations of the landlords or programs that they are in. For example, the ability to keep a pet or have someone stay over. And we hope to create a more welcoming and accommodating living situation for them. And this chart shows that the median rent and living situations of former foster youth at program entry and exit. So most of the foster youth that are joining this program were previously in foster care, which is 33%. And the median rent is $400 down here. SB 9 is one of California's new laws that is designed to remove barriers to the particular type of housing that could help foster youth. Um, the law can assist an individual in getting approval to help address this housing need. It allows landowners and or homeowners to build up to four housing units in addition to a pre-existing home. So you can see that these are the existing structures and this is where the tiny homes would be located. Our foster youth proposals align with both the California planning guides as well as San Diego County's housing element, namely the part of the plans that address the Fair Housing Act. So here we have the general application in California, and this is the site-specific application in San Diego County. Um, and as you can see, our project checks off all the boxes for all the goals and SB9. 
cost is always a concern with a project like this. And you can see here that a tiny house may still cost thousands of dollars. But at an affordable rent for the foster youth, the owner can still recoup their investment and get back what they paid. And here are some examples of what the tiny homes might look like provided by my peers. And here are some examples of the jobs that are available in the area. From this, you can see foster youth might make $350 to $400 a week. And affordable housing is often defined as a monthly rental payment equal to one week's worth of earnings, which is about $400 a month of rent, which on the previous slide with the charts back here, you can see that the median rent was $400, which matches with our calculations. So at an affordable rent for the foster youth, they can still make back what they originally paid. But there are additional resources besides housing that our project client would like to build upon. For example, the Just in Time for Foster Youth program. This is a program that was created for foster youth by foster youth, and it helps them get access to their own means of transportation. And they just need to fulfill these requirements and they are able to get their own car to travel. And these are some of the local colleges closest to the tiny home location and their resources for foster youth. Most California colleges have these programs and resources um, like EOPS and Next Up. And this map over here shows the colleges and schools relative to the tiny home location. These are some financial aid resources that are specifically for foster youth. Many are easy to apply for and some do not even need to be paid back like the Cal grants. And these are some additional support services that may pertain to some foster youth regarding mental health. And this is the map of the services relative to the tiny home location. And on this slide are some extra links to the health services that were mentioned on the previous slide. And if you're interested in looking more into our work, these are some additional references that have been provided by some of my peers who have worked on this project with me. Now that we have presented this presentation and information to you about foster youth being a special population, additional support for foster youth, planning systems that are in place and can provide assistance, and individual property owners can provide this assistance, we hope that you leave this presentation with a better understanding of our project and how it will be of great service to the former foster youth community. Thank you for listening.